Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by Transformers animations, and I'm talking specifically about the actual transformations from vehicle to robot. And as an animator, it's something I've always wanted to try, but could never figure out a good plan of attack. And it didn't help that there were no good breakdowns or tutorials of how others have pulled off their Transformers animations. But from making my weekly videos for this channel, I've learned some new tricks and techniques and decided it was time for me to finally do this. And I'm gonna blow the money shot right here and now. Check this out. There it is. But since I've always been looking for a good breakdown of how a Transformers animation is done, it would be irresponsible of me not to record this process and make a detailed video of how I did it. So let's go back to the beginning of this very complicated and at times a bit stressful process that was 100% worth the effort I put in. But first, let's watch the transformation one more time. So I grabbed shots of Bumblebee transforming from a bunch of different sources. The trailers for his solo movie, from the Michael Bay movies, from an awesome YouTuber called Ozro who does a lot of 2D Transformers animations, and finally from one of my favorite video game franchises, War for Cybertron. I even ordered a book on the art of the sequel, Fall of Cybertron, to use as a reference. The only video I could find of someone actually talking about how they did their Transformers animation was a behind the scenes on Fall of Cybertron by the lead animator. And while it wasn't really that in depth, it did have some useful pieces of information. One little tidbit being that each robot did have two separate models that were swapped between mid-transformation. We're not just dealing with one robot or one mesh, if you would. We're actually doing a sleight of hand kind of magician's trick where we sub in um, a vehicle for the robot. I didn't actually end up doing this myself exactly, but it did help me realize that an elaborate transformation couldn't be done by just having the character fold themselves up. The end result would just be too boxy, like the oldest version of the toys, or like a folding Halloween costume. Okay, that is pretty impressive, but it's not what I'm going for. What I had to do was actually something I figured out when doing that Zoids video a few weeks ago. See, for that, when animating Liger Zero, I needed two sets of armor to be able to swap onto him. So I built a skeleton of the character with no armor and linked the pieces of the armor to the skeleton. Shoulder to shoulder, head armor to head, and so on. So for Bumblebee, what I decided to do was something similar, but each piece of the armor would have to animate into a different shape during the transformation. Once I got my reference material, I made a rough drawing of what I wanted B to look like in his final robot form, heavily referencing the Bumblebee movie design. I made a couple of changes. For instance, I liked how the War of Cybertron design and the old cartoon design had his wheels become part of his angler heel, whereas in the movie version, his back wheels kind of just disappeared. After that, I jumped back to the videos of Bumblebee transforming and watched them in slow motion over and over and over and over again to get an idea of how his different pieces were moving and how they were changing. In watching the animations in slow motion, I noticed that some of his bits actually shrink, but you can't tell when the whole complicated transformation is happening at once. That was a trick I'd definitely take advantage of later on. After that, I roughly mapped out where I'd want the pieces to move to, from car to robot. This changed as I progressed, but it stayed basically the same. Next step was to make and rig the skeleton. I roughed it out, then inked and colored the different limbs in separate layers, as I would for any regular human character rigs. With that done, I brought the pieces into After Effects and rigged them together with a plugin called Duic, which is totally free and absolutely fantastic. I'll link it in the description. This thing is a lifesaver for anyone doing character animation in After Effects. My basic character rigs have seven controllers for movement, two for the arms, two for the legs, a waist, a torso, and a head. I also usually make various hands to swap between, but for the purposes of this video, it wasn't necessary. Though I do intend to add an arm cannon onto this rig down the road. After the skeleton was built, I inked and colored the car. Then it was time for the transformation. 
First, I animated the movement that I wanted to occur during the transformation. When in car mode, I knew he'd have to be all folded up and then stretch out into a standing position as he transformed. I thought that fist slam he did during his transformation in Transformers 1 was pretty cool, so I made my rig do something like that. Next, I made a copy of the car and started pulling pieces off of it and laying them down over the skeleton in about the spot I knew I wanted them to end up. They'd all have to be tweaked or even redrawn in the shift from car to robot, but I wanted as many of the car elements as possible to stay recognizable as car pieces when in robot mode. Next, I took the redrawn pieces into After Effects along with the original car drawing, which I used as a base while laying out the pieces of the armor onto the skeleton when it was all folded up in car mode. Then I animated all the pieces changing from their car mode shape into their robot mode shape. Also, there was a ton of trial and error stuff in here, and I'm glossing over it. At one point, I was just laying on my bed, staring up at the ceiling, trying to figure out what to do. Anyway, when the bits were all transforming as I wanted them to, I attached them to the rig and did a lot of position remapping to make sure they moved across the robot smoothly during the transformation and none of the pieces were floating off him during the shift. This included making them move ever so slightly in a 3D space to make sure things like his thigh armor wouldn't be in front of his arm. And after a ton of tweaking and cleaning up, I finally got to this. The only thing left to do was to make this rig easier to use, because this project got super messy. And the point of a rig is to make the character easy to animate in the future. So I linked all the armor animations to sliders, and attached all those to one master slider. This lets me do all of the armor changes with one control. All I'd have to do manually after that was the actual skeleton movements. And as a thank you to everyone who watched this all the way to the end, I've uploaded the project and put it in the description below, so anyone can download it and mess around with it, so long as you have a copy of After Effects CS6 or above. Also, you might need to install Duik. I'm not actually sure, but it's free, and you should get it regardless, because it's fantastic. But that's all for this week. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and I hope this was helpful, or at least interesting, and be sure to subscribe. cool and helpful. Oh good, we are you playing today when well, now we're the first one's Pop Cross Studio. This is Phantom Trider with it uh the six censored Lego set Spit just do good, who is also a Lego YouTuber. Like a TV show that senses out the swear words. Sometimes yeah. Lego senses out I'll be back. I gotta go give me a drink. Don't I wanna watch. I saw Suicide Squad thing, that's how I saw. And I have a fun fact about that with Lego related stuff. Okay, what do you think got your mom's attention? When you saw Suicide Squad? I saw Harley Quinn. <laughs> That's technically why I told you this one. Okay. Anyways, though, like I said, I have some fun facts. So. Since well, around the time, people, I'm back, around the time when the Suicide Squad movie was coming out, the first one, with Gerald Lowe's Joker, Lego couldn't make official sets for it because of the name. So here, so here what they did, they took the characters, as far as I know, they, don't, they took Katana, Maybe Captain Boomer, I don't know, so that's why I'm saying as far as I know. Katana, Deadshot, Killer Croc, and Hardy Quinn around the time the movie's coming out and put them in other sets to still promote the movie. But since but they're just gonna use the name Suicide Squad. Just put the just put it the squad. You can make a whole blind bag series called DC Comics the Squad or just call it the Squad since it's called, I mean, that's one of its uh, other names. I mean, there's Task Force X as this normal name. The Suicide Squad, since people die, that's another name. And then just the Squad. Also, I'm going to teach her in, like, the other type of Suicide Squad team that ain't the Suicide Squad. That is the Secret Six. I'm going to 
teach you about that one. Of certain parts of their sets, they might not be considered kid friendly enough, or they might introduce kids to very serious topics, mm. and Lego may not be willing to do that. Oh, well, all Lego consider the original Ooh. material to be violent. So let's check out the six censored Lego sets. And I'm not necessarily criticizing LEGO for censoring all these sets. This is more observations of the changes LEGO has chosen to make. But I may still voice my personal opinion a little bit. But I'd like to ask a friend's There's help a discussing few, uh, these sets. They've covered this topic before Diablo, on their own channel. Cool and they're a true LEGO master. In fact, I took inspiration for this from their video. Hey, just too good. Wanna help out? Oh, okay. I've covered these sets before. I'd be glad to help. Sorry, I was just a little bit surprised there. Hey, thanks, my friend. It's great to have you back. Let's begin. Number six. <laughs> the Jurassic World or Dino sets. Originally, in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies, the humans were desperately fighting for their lives, and they'd often have to oh. bring out lethal weapons. Did you know, in the one of the park sets for the original movies... They actually added in the porta potty from when the guy got eaten off it by the T Rex. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they not the guy, but they added in like you can eat, but they added in the porta potty potty as part of the set. Uh, we, we see someone acting right now, or someone or something activates a motion light, so is that what she's going to go check. No, that was a car headlight. Never mind, it's car headlight. Take our neighbors two trailers down. Okay. Coming home. Or else they'd be torn to shreds by dinosaurs. But soldiers and civilians in modern Lego dinosaur sets will never wield any lethal weapons. Rather, they'll instead carry tranquilizer guns. But this wasn't always the case. You see, Lego so they still get guns. It just. Mm. You know, I mean, they have scientists bring these dinosaurs back to life, so why kill them? Why just not train them and then put them back into the goddamn cage? Um, oh, wait, it's kind of hard to do that when you have a goddamn T-Rex chasing your ass down. Also, this is one of the, the Lego, one of the Lego brands that was made that had a Lego Dimensions pack. It was a one pack. Even censored the names uh, of these sets, uh, where in 2005 in North America, we had Dino Attack. The rest of the world had Dino 2010 the same year. The original Dino Attack sets were about hunting down and killing, or at least defending against the dinosaurs with heavy artillery vehicles. You can see on the front box, the helicopter is firing at the dinosaur as the building is set on fire. It's kind of awesome. But modern dino sets change this around to be about the capture of the dinosaurs. That being said, a lot of these still look awesome. At first, there were still some weapons, but by Dino 2012, all lethal weapons had been dropped completely in favor of tranquilizers. Also, on a side note, this box is kind of bothering me. Do you think this box Okay, is so Joker can still have a gun or a lethal weapon, but... You can't have one in a dinosaur set? I can, I can just say fucking buy my dinosaur set that don't come with lethal weapons. And then just add a lethal weapon in the, and, go and, to, you know. and go to Amazon or eBay mm -hmm. and just buy me a Lego accessory set that comes with guns, that comes with guns and swords and shit mm -hmm. so I can defend my, so my Legos can defend themselves mm -hmm. against the dinosaurs. Wait, I want to make my own custom Victor Zaz. Only thing I need though is orange pants and a, a normal skin color with a no shirt, torso, and arm pieces with hands. And then just any random Lego head and a knife. I want to get, I want to try to get one of the Arkham Asylum okay, Lego set. Okay, goddamn cat dog. You've been around all the dogs we used to own too fucking long. Well, he got out the door with that noise. You hear a vehicle and you're looking all around for it. You hear a vehicle or a dirt bike or whatever the hell it is going down the fucking. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a motorcycle? It might have been. She'll be back. Yeah, I gotta go pee.
Yeah, but anyways, like I was saying, I wanted to try to get one of the Arkham Asylum Lego sets. So, yeah. Okay, I'm back. I had to go tell my mom something, people. Anyway, so... I want to get one, like, uh, Arkham Asylum Batman set. Or, like, a Lego City Prison set. So I can actually have an actual prison cell because me and my brother have, well, for Marvel villains, we have two of the Outriders and Thanos for just a Mysterio and Carnage. That's all we have for Marvel villains. For Batman villains, we have Joker, DC villains mainly, but... That's just all for DC villains, which is Batman villains right now, which is Joker, two penguins, the no penguin and the bat and the penguin from the, the Batman and the cat and Catwoman. So yeah, and then just one random Lego robber from the Lego City line. Colors are kind of garish and clash terribly with the Lego. Yeah, I know what you mean. I remember we were talking and you were saying that you liked the box designs of Dino Attack as opposed to exposure on the Dino 2010 sets. Whether or not I agree with Lego's change, I think I understand why they made the change. While hunting was a more common hobby in previous decades, it's not as much of a social norm nowadays as it was then. For some people, why would they bother hunting their food when they can buy their meat from the store, while other people feel in their element hunting in nature? Wild meat is extremely climate friendly too, so there's definite pluses. Anyway, way off topic. Nowadays, Lego Dino sets haven't a single lethal weapon in sight, Jurassic or otherwise. I don't know. Personally, I'd like some defense against a giant human eating carnivore beyond a tranquilizer. Nowadays, we have sets like the Dino Hunter set, which comes with a big crane to capture the T Rex, but no lethal weapons in sight. Number five Woohoo! Lego Star Wars Boba, Boba Fett. Fett's Starship. Originally, Boba Fett's Starship was actually called Slave One. But the Lego version was changed to Boba Fett Starship. I think there's one particular reason this was changed. A Lego set with the word slave in it stands out like a sore thumb. It's a word with a lot of muddy history yeah, and literally. atrocities behind it. So I'm not that At surprised that Lego shied away from the word. Hey, I remember you discussed this one already. Okay, so what did you think about Lego avoiding the like S word? Anymore. Now this is speculation, of course, but I don't it. think they want to advertise that Boba Fett was a slaver and that he had a ship to transport slaves. I mean, slavery is bad, of course. So are wars, and it's a series called Star Wars. Whatever you do, do not look at where the name Stormtrooper comes from. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, at the end of the day, they can call they us mean, whatever they want. It's game. their company. But this time, we actually have confirmation on what happened right from the source. As Brickset and Jedi News briefly spoke with the LEGO Star Wars design team about the change name. We're not calling it Save One anymore. It's Boba Fett Starship. Okay, why are we dropping the slave name? It's not something that's been announced publicly. But it's a name that Disney doesn't want to use anymore. Now that Disney's taken over Star Wars, I guess they just want to play it safer and avoid any references to Boba Fett's previous cargo. And finally, there's of course a less okay, cultural and more Okay, so they want to play it safer, but then they won't just make their own new characters for live-action movies. Okay, then you might just take him out of the 
Empire, because the only thing Boba Fett does is is transport slaves on his spaceship. No, 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 not that. He's also like a hitman, basically. A assassin for a hire up, basically. You know, one for hire, go for hire. But, 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 okay, but, okay, at, at least they didn't ruin him that much. Uh, they already ruined lightsabers, too, but now they're just floppy sticks. In the newer ones, that's why I only watched the goddamn episode one. In two, that's why I watched the classics only. And some of the cartoons. And only thing uh. newer that I watch aside from one episode of the Obi Wan Kenobi show and half a Mandalorian <coughs> are the Lego ones. Lego movies now. <coughs> but. It's just I can see why, why did it? Why they changed the name to the ship? But then again, in the original movie, Dark Vader slayed, uh, killed youngins, children. Duh. He he killed children. Fuck! If Lion King was real, Scar would did a Dark Vader because. It was a male lion becomes the leader of that pride. He kills all the children that ain't his. So Nala and Simba, well, Nala maybe scars. That that's not a pop out of the possibility yet. No, she maybe they do not. They they have three candidates. One from the book series, which ain't canon to the movie. They say Scar and Mufasa. Your actual male lion does not kill the young lions. They chase the males off from the pack, and the females stay with the pack. No, the youngins. They don't kill the kids. The kids ain't theirs. They don't kill them if they ain't theirs. If they're females, they still stay with the pack. And the males get chased off to go find their own territory. Well, sometimes, not all the time. It just depends on what. Grown male lion in it. Sometimes they, it just depends. Sometimes the the runoff. Sometimes they're dead. Practical reason for this name change. It's just straight up better marketing to advertise Boba Fett on your Lego box rather than some random ship name like Slave One. Also, it's a bad name because. Think of people what they're gonna say nowadays, especially your African Americans. Mm. You're gonna say Lego supports say yes to repairing. You know, they're gonna say Lego supports slavery now. Mm. Um, and me, the nerd over here, gonna say no. In the original Star Wars, that what it was called because Boba Fett transported slaves. And then they're gonna say that you support slavery now. Mm. And I don't. And it wasn't, it was like multiple, I think multiple, I don't know, they're like aliens, okay, I don't remember, because I only saw, he, he literally, one, I saw one where he got eaten by the sandworm. Can we get back to the video now, I want to yeah, see Harley. I'm going to pause it. Okay. There we go. Stop showing Joker and Harley and Homer, because you're not even in the video. Oh. Boomer Bill Barrage. What a weird name. I've heard of the Bonsai Bill. Yeah. But for some weird reason, they've renamed Bonsai Bill to Boomer Bill. I don't think there's ever been an enemy in Mario called Boomer Bill. Has there? Nope. It seems like Lego just made that up. Huh. Why'd they change the name? Well, Bonsai Bill had the word Bonsai in it, which is a Japanese war cry. It's a loaded title. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. The Bon... But the Japanese fucking made the damn. It is? Yeah. I thought it was just a tree. No. I thought they that it Bonsai was just the name of a tree. No. It's a in Japan where Mario originated from that when it mean I already knew this. Because I wanted because someone else already talked about the name the change of the bomb. I, I just call it the bomb. The bonsai tree originates over in Japan too, mm -hmm. so I thought that's where they got the name for the bomb from was the tree. Well, why if I just call it bomb or bomber? 
or the rock. It looks more like a rocket, really, than a bomb. I mean, it flies at ya. I said if it's the atomic bomb, but who cares? That, that's too much. We're learning history. Bonsai charge was a term used during World War II to refer to Japanese human wave attacks. Basically, when the Nazi allied Japanese forces conducted a frontal assault with a huge wave of soldiers. But you know, on the other hand, Bonsai can also be translated to a Japanese cheer. Bonsai! Bonsai! bonsai. I'd also note that Bonsai could be changed to a bonsai tree with two letters changed. But on the other hand, very unfortunate things could be done to the words rake and count with only one letter change. So I th think I'll keep that argument to myself. Good call. Lego standards seem to rape. What's count? Though. Rake. Rape. I know that one. I know that's why that's a bad thing. But what's count? count? Which is a few letters changed. Rake becomes... Oh. Okay. Fuck. Uh -huh. Count becomes cunt. Mm. One cunt. Uh, uh, uh. Two, Two cunt. Uh, 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 uh. Three cunt. Uh, 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 uh. I can make a freaking actual inappropriate fucking sesame treat. Robot chicken, hire me for your next sesame treat segment. I could all with the count. I could, I could pull that off. I can even do the voice. <laughs> One, uh, 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 two, uh, 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 three, uh, uh, type three <laughs> diabetes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that's not funny. What the fuck? There ain't no type three diabetes. <laughs> There's only type one and type two. Type yeah. one, you're born with. Type two, you get it. It's thought. 2023. Type three can happen if it wants to. <laughs> as what any modern teenager that ain't me would say. No fucking Richie Rich. Like, it's 2023. <laughs> but I don't fucking care. <laughs> She now talking to the snake that we got. Yeah, um, Ma, you wanted to see. Change a lot with work stuff. What I mean, there's some new Indiana Jones, Jones oh, stuff Indiana covering Jones. some more stuff. There's Star Wars once again. It's kind of confusing. It is a weird double standard, isn't it? I guess Star Wars. There's someone here, Star Wars, without knowing what it, what it is. They're fake, but it's Star Wars having war. I say Star Wars. Oh, the stars the Star were all in war, war. And they were at war with each other. What? Hmm? You heard me. Mm -mm. All the stars that live in Hollywood at war with each other. That yeah, maybe, but maybe the stars upside are in the sky. Oh my God, Jim Carrey versus George Clooney. Jim <laughs> Carrey fight. It's called Star Wars. Sorry if I didn't know it was a space movie. Space franchise. It's not just movies anymore. Okay, TV shows. If I didn't know animated it was, shorts. If I didn't know it was a space sci-fi franchise. You just move your head back like, God damn it. You think they're going to hit my ass by knowing it. I think that fucking... But celebrities are fighting yeah. that to, the, to the death or something? That's what we yeah, got to watch like celebrity, celebrity death battle. Death match. Yeah. This is considered buried enough in sci-fi that they make an exception. When it comes to real life stuff, I remember you mentioned they did censoring with the Osprey too. Yeah, Lego pulled the release of the Osprey right before it was supposed to come out. Some small stores still got it, and then they just released a statement covering it all. We have a long-standing policy not to create sets which feature military vehicles, so it has been decided not to proceed with the launch of this product. We appreciate that some fans who are looking forward to this set may be disappointed. But we believe it's important to ensure we uphold our brand values. <sighs> Alright, Lego. Fair enough. You do you. Ed 
editor fun fact here. I asked him if he gave me this segment because he assumed I would know the anime used in all of the bonsai memes he kept finding during his research. To which, yeah, it's Kanta Collection, episode 2, but that's beside the point. What he doesn't know is that this show is actually about World War II naval ships having souls and being reincarnated as cutesy anime girls. I am not even kidding. Banzai indeed, Strider. World War II naval ship? Really? I don't fucking know. <laughs> like a Jabba's palace. No, I don't want the that. Have a long standing policy not to create sets. I want to watch military it. vehicles. <laughs> so it has been decided not to proceed with the launch of this product. Come on, we appreciate that some fans who are looking forward to this set may be disappointed. What? But we believe it's no, important to ensure yeah, we here. uphold our Who's brand so? values. <sighs> All right, Lego, right, fair right, enough. You do you. Reincarnated. Fun fact here. I asked him if he gave me this segment because he assumed I would know the anime used in all of the bonsai memes he kept finding during his research. To which, yeah, it's Kanta Collection episode. Hmm. I don't know. It's in Japanese. So I don't know. It's literally the title's in, and she speaks so fast. That Is he no Hiroki? <laughs> so too, but that's beside the point. What he doesn't know is that this show is actually about. Hang on. It's a Sub values. subtitle. All right, Lego. Fair enough. You do you. Editor, fun fact here. I asked him if he gave me this segment because he assumed I would know the anime used in all of the bonsai memes he kept finding during his research. To which, yeah, it's Kanta Collection, episode two, but that's beside. Mm. Anime used in all of the bonsai memes he kept finding during his research. To which, yeah, it's. Hmm. There you go. Yeah, there you go too. Interior collection episode two. There we go. I know what to look for now. Hopefully, not inappropriate. I'm hoping. I'm I'm really hoping, because. <laughs> oh, I can't take you down the fucking whole fucking thing of inappropriate animes. Just by me finding what the fuck the names were doing YouTube shorts. And I would just go through it because I'm fucking bored. And I came across this thing called anime drug dealer. Instead of the drugs, it's the anime that dealing began became illegal in that universe. Okay, so watching the movie. Mm. Kanta Collection, the episode two, but that's I didn't know the point. Watching the movie. Like, he doesn't away. know is that this show is actually about World War II naval ships having souls and being reincarnated as cutesy anime girls. I am not even kidding. Banzai indeed, Strider. World War II naval ship. Really? Well, now I know. And for number three, Lego Jabba's Palace. This set has just caused endless problems, hasn't it? As well as the controversy it got into with the Turkish cultural community, the Lego set also got a couple of censorships. In the original Lego Jabba's Palace, we got a slave layer in a bikini. But in the modern Jabba's Palace set, Chewbacca is in chains instead. Do you keep in mind that in oh, 2013, no, he's a now? year after the Jabba's Palace, <laughs> we did get Slave Leia in the Jabba's yeah. Sailboard set, but I guess maybe they didn't want to put her chain to the wall like the original set had, or maybe it was just Lego saying, oh yeah, you gotta buy this other set to complete this set that we released the previous year. Oh dang, I missed that one completely, sorry. I guess they saved Slave Leia for the special yacht set. Another censorship I pointed out on my list video was the Dancing Twi'lek, where they censored the nipples. In the movie, her nipples are exposed, but it is in the dark, so you can't really see too much. In this particular set, obviously that particular feature was avoided. Still, at least they kept the fishnet shirt. I mean, haven't you noticed, I guess, Lego male figures don't even include nipples either. Uh, yeah, you're right, they don't. Why do you suppose that is? It seems like it'd be super easy to just add two little dots to their figures. I mean, some theories have it that if they did have those, people would just swap the minifigure head and 
make a nude female or whatever, which is more taboo in many parts of the world. Who knows? That's true, though I suppose if trolls are going to go that far, they might as well just draw the dots on themselves. Yeah. Please, you mean, Lego Simpsons. When it comes to Simpsons, there's a lot of alcohol references. Oh. And Lego makes and sure to keep almost any references to alcohol out. out of their sets. I, I mean, Lego has an exception to this rule if it's the his On a nude male's body. Yeah. And I have a nude female Lego. And then you just, no, no. Then you just, like, for my Thor, you just take off his arms, put it there, and then you basically will. Aside from, and then you just, Take the wear my pants guy's pants from the Lego movie set. Yeah, he have a yellow lace, but you can paint that into normal human skin tone. And then you have only thing that be there is the underwear. Or you just paint that over as well. It still might be yellow and look like Lego. But if you put a fe one of their female heads on their yellow, mm. one of their yellow naked bodies. Or a non-yellow naked one. Or a non-yellow naked body, whatever. Mm. You still have a naked female Lego. Yeah. Historical. Oh, oh, yeah. You remember Lego? How the fuck do I get back to that? I accidentally skip it. I actually, I meant to hit the unpause button. Historical, I mean, historical I mean, fantasy I setting, but castle, pirates, you'll see booze pop up. But yeah. when it comes to, say, a modern beer like Duff beer, they instead give Homer a Buzz Cola to drink. And, like, I, I get it, Why not just when a has Homer cola? ever drunk a Buzz Cola in his life? Two examples of where we Pick can see this alcohol cola. censoring cola. are in Duff Lego cola. Dimensions. And, of course, in the Lego Quickie Mart set, Homer can be seen in these holding a Buzz Cola. I mean, there is that modern setting of Bro Thor's set, which has booze implied. But you didn't see, like, Selma and Patty smoking cigarettes in the Simpsons series, too. Oh, uh, yeah. No more chain smoking from these two. They're holding their DMV equipment instead, so I guess you could argue they can't smoke on the job. Or, even better, maybe they quit. That'd be amazing. According to the Simpsons wiki, the gray tinge in Patty and Selma's hair mm -hmm. is actually due to cigarette ash. So I think Lego can only hide their addiction so much here. Though I have noticed that Patty and... I think they quit at some point in it, in one of the episodes. They were supposed to, but if you realize their hair, never changed color in that episode either. So did they actually quit, or did they just say maybe they quit. that they quit? Or maybe what happened, they, or they did quit and their hair just, you know, stained like that from all the cigarettes that they've been... Smoking all over the years of all the yeah. cigarettes. Some haven't yeah. been showing up as much in modern Simpsons episodes. I wonder if modern Simpsons are trying to shy them away from their chain-smoking habits. Well, probably not. Because it turns out Patty and Selma quit smoking in season 27 in the episode Puffless. They finally learned what caused their dad's death. Apparently, he died of lung cancer. And that finally gave the duo the push they needed to finally quit smoking. Good for them. Wait, never mind. They immediately smoke at the end of the episode. I mean, trust me. Sobriety is very hard. Somebody who's been sober for almost a year now. But there is one glaring omission where it's like, oh, they didn't include that character. Someone else is missing? Who? Mo. He's missing from all the Lego Simpsons sets. Not even Lego Dimensions. Oh, yeah. Unless you look at custom builds, there's no chance of building Mo's tavern. But some people will be like, why would they? But then they add him in the Lego episode that was promoting the sets. And the blind bags mm. and the dimensions pack. But you don't get him because he serves alcohol. Okay. Instead of having alcohol, have it be Bud's Buzz Soda. Okay. I don't understand how that why they switched out of Homer's beer can for soda yet. Mo can't sell soda at the bar. Just it's a soda bar instead of a have it be bar. like a caffeine like a soda place, okay? Like I said, or, it's a soda bar. Yeah. Do this. Lego Star Wars has bartenders. Yeah, they have too. Star Wars seems to be exception to some of their rules, don't they? I guess Mo is like the physical embodiment of alcohol references. When I see Mo, I think it's hard not to think of beer. Don't worry. I still like your Mo. Rock on. It's a shame. 
trust me, Mo is one of my most wanted minifigures ever. Rock on, Mo. He's a great character. Yeah, we all like Mo. Rock on, buddy. Do I have four delicious long, pieces of chocolate? A, a long piece Three here? crisp wafers. Two what? layers of sweet Is it, Does food. anybody have a long? One incredible break. Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Now served up Wait a minute. Who is well, no one named Who is Lego this? Holly Quinn from Suicide Mo. Squad. That's it's Mo. interesting to see just what Lego has done with Holly Quinn. She's a real star of the Lego DC supervillains. And she's been in many Lego sets. But you'll probably never see the name of the squad she's famous for being in, the Suicide Squad. Lego Harley Quinn's just kind of there. And to me, this makes some sense. I don't think Lego wants to be the one to introduce the word suicide to kids. Because detaching that word from squad could lead to some potentially shocking search results for some kids. And it could lead to parents having to discuss a very serious topic with their kids much earlier than they ever thought they'd have to. Yeah, but Lego did try to capitalize on Suicide Squad's fame where they advertised it at the time of the release of the new Suicide Squad movie on their Lego shop page. Yeah, I remember Lego YouTubers like Ash and Flesh were kind of annoyed at the double standards of this. I, I don't understand what they were thinking. Like, to me, I thought it was a joke. Like, there's no way. What are they thinking? He pointed out that Lego advertised Harley Quinn on the release day yeah, of Suicide one. Squad That's in her that, uniform that right on their front the... page. Yeah, yeah, when you click to browse these Lego... <coughs> Actually shocking search in her uniform right on the... He pointed out that Lego advertised Harley Quinn. Okay, it is set number six, set number seven six zero oh, five three. Batman Gotham City Cycle Chase comes with Batman, Harley Quinn, Deadshot. The vehicles are jetpack, Harley bike, and Batman's bike. It's I my next invention. I actually want this set just for the like. I, I want it for the spell, so I want just the character, mainly Deadshot, since you can, since he, I think there was the only seven he was in, was this set. Mr. Fine, give me some Legos so I can work on I said, I hope you. the Legos and then start working on mini figures and shit. Mm -hmm. To work on a mini little city that I can just reconfigure whenever I fucking mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Keep it all in touch and use it when I want and <clears throat> reconfigure it as I fucking decide to fucking. Mm -hmm. Use it. I said that's why I'll help you. Since with Legos, I'm all looking for them. On the release day of Suicide Squad, in her uniform, right on their front page. Yet when you click to browse these Lego sets, there's no Suicide Squad sets to be seen. Instead, Harley Quinn uses her Suicide Squad costume in the Batman vs. Penguin set for some reason. It seems like Lego would like to capitalize on the popularity of Harley Quinn more. But perhaps the name of her squad makes it a no-go. I mean, the movie's rated R, the second one at least, at the time this advertisement was out. And of course, the name, The Suicide Squad, definitely prevented it when the first movie came out. But no, yeah, it just there have been some really it. good sets submitted to Lego Ideas, was too. People tried to make a set referring to the said squad. But to no big surprise, LEGO has rejected all of these ideas. There's also small censored details, like in the movie, the character had property of Joker, but in the Apocalypse Berg set, that title's removed. Well, I do get that modification better. I do Personally, get that I'm alright with that change for kids. LEGO doesn't seem to have any content tied to R ratings, but I did do a list video kind of looking into the closest things they had to R rated tie ins. You can check that out on Just Too Good. Anyway, if you have an opinion on these sets that were censored, or well, you think I missed a set, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And thanks to my friend Just Too Good for their help and for inspiring this video with their own sense of Lego sets video. You can find Just Too Good. Video of this here. No problem, Strider. This was so now, much. Now, another video for me. Until my oh, phone is out, oh. How we're doing. This and 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 but it's something that I found interesting. What is the man bat suit? After Talia al Ghul ordered the heretic to kill Damian Wayne, Batman sought out revenge on his former lover. 
He injected himself with the man-bat serum, turning himself into a human-bat hybrid. He then donned a prototype exoskeleton, which helped amplify his fierce animalistic behavior. Equipped with wings for flight and extended metal arms for combat, transforming Bruce into a true creature of the night. The suit could stun enemies with powerful electric shockwaves, and was armed with a cloaking device which was extremely effective against the League of Shadows. Batman was able to defeat Talia al Ghul and her army of man-bats, and eventually beat Heretic in battle. However, it is revealed that Heretic is actually a clone of Damian Wayne, artificially aged to maturity by Talia al Ghul. But before Batman could find answers, Talia activates the bomb in Heretic's armor, killing the clone and destroying Wayne Tower in the process. What is the Man Bat suit? After Talia. No, you can find a short that, that you like. Um, you can go to. The Juggernaut, also known as Kane Mark, in an alter. Oh, yep. This is the only McDonald's in the world that sells pizza, so we have a McDonald's cheese. No, but still sells it. Hold on, let me. No, Ma, I got it. I gotta get up anyway. Sucks. You're not going out. Well, I gotta give me a little bit more drink anyway. Okay. I can do that. Yeah, cause then I can have you just go get my phone. Let me just drop out. I know. Why I said I could do that? Okay. <laughs> You're not going out. You're not going. You're not going out. Stop me. It's too hot outside. Sorry for the meowing people. Our cat is an inside, outside cat, but it's too hard for him to go outside because of the heat wave that we have. Cat, we probably won't go outside again until like Sunday. So yeah. Anyway, this is the only McDonald's that still has it. We are back <coughs> in like early 2000s, I believe. This was on the menu. I don't know, I've never seen it on the menu. It was like, in some areas. Okay, not every McDonald's, but in some locations. But then it got switched to this one, which is the biggest McDonald's in the world. Same thing with the McHot Dog and the McDonald's Hot Dog and the Spaghetti. Cool test. Let's pull. Alright, McDonald's. Anything? Oh. Mm hmm? Ronald McDonald's in the cheese pool. <laughs> huh? Last chance for the cheese pool. Last chance again. Oh, yes. Last chance. This is the only McDonald's. It taste. You know, it ain't for that. It's yeah, the uh, cheese pool rating. I already mm -hmm. know. You see, you know, when you get the cheese, you know, but then when you eat it, when, not when, uh, Sonic's, uh, Mashwara series got, like, more than that. It was, like, five something. Anyways, bye-bye, people. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.